So in large part, this book has been long in the coming. Mm -hmm. And you've been talking, like there's been SCWH roundtables that you have done, like the one in Chattanooga. You have been very active promoting this in kind of the lead up to this publication. But you also have, dare I say, sort of a running feud in Civil War <laughs> times with regard to the importance of the Civil War in the West and certain scholars not kind of kind of dismissing that. Mm -hmm. um, so why do you think we need to care? What makes mm -hmm. the Civil War West so important and what is it that scholars say that focus primarily on Virginia should take away from, say, reading this book and in general thinking about the West when it comes to the Civil War? Sure. Well, first, let me say that I have never argued, and no one who works in this field has ever argued, uh, that the Western theater, and by that I mean kind of west of the Trans-Mississippi, right. um, that this theater is more important than Virginia, or more important than the Carolinas, or, or the Trans-Mississippi. Um, obviously, it has many fewer men engaged in battle, it has many fewer casualties, um, but my argument has always been because of, because of that, it seems even more remarkable, right? There were only six, you know, six to seven thousand men engaged, mm -hmm. and their disputes and conflicts um, secured the forty percent of the national land mass. Like this is like so. If you take it uh, in acreage, sort of taken per soldier, it's this. It's incredible. Like sure. what they achieved. Um, on both sides at different points in this conflict, um, far, far exceeds what Eastern theater soldiers um, achieved. But also, I mean, I think what's important to note is that both the, for both the Union and the Confederacy, um, the fight over the West and its future did not just stop. Um, you know, at Fort, at Fort Sumner, or Fort Sumter, I'm sorry. Um, Fort Sumner is in New Mexico, it's always happened. But, um, so, you know, usually when we think about it or we write about it, the West is hugely important, the expansion of, of slavery into the Western territories. We're ta always talking about the West. And then suddenly we hit April 1861, and it's like the West doesn't exist. And what I'm trying to do is to say that, that that wasn't the case, that the Union and the Confederacy continued to care about the West. And while they were there wrestling over it, they were running into native groups asserting their sovereignty over the West and that the outcome was important in ways that we really haven't considered before. That, you know, when the Confederacy loses the West, they're sort of, they are hemmed in, and they don't have any um, gold supplies. They have no, you know, they're so, sort of suffering even more because of the blockade. And that affects how their economy is running and the deployment of troops. Um, and then for the Union, you know, they've secured um, the West against Confederates, but then they have not only Apaches and Navajos, but a host of other native peoples kind of to deal with. And their vision of the future involves a West of free labor, which right. is a very white vision, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and because they win the West, they're able to pass a lot of very important legislation, the Pacific Railway Act, the Homestead Act, um, these pieces of legislation they were trying to pass in the 1850s, but Southern politicians yeah. were preventing them. So. And those pieces of legislation, I would argue, are some of the most important in the 19th century um, for the development of the country. And it's enabled by the Civil War in the West. So my argument here really is, you know, not that the West is more important than the East, but that considering the Civil War from the West gives us a much more expansive view of the conflict and the aims of both the Union and the Confederacy in the war. And I think that's an important point to keep in mind that oftentimes when you read through Civil War literature, it's like Sumter comes and everything ceases in the rest of the country. Right. But I think it's also an interesting counterfactual that you're bringing up there of what would have happened if the Confederates had gained access to the Colorado gold field, would have been able to sustain themselves longer, conduct the war better. I mean, there's endless opportunities there. Right, and I think, you know, you the amount of money that was coming in from California just on a yearly basis was like 20 plus million dollars. I mean, this is huge for 
for the union to be able to fund the war, you know, and still they're having problems funding it even with that, but but it it did make a difference. And so, you know, the 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 point also that I make is I don't really understand why some civil war scholars want to say only this region matters, you know, um, because I I believe in creating the fullest po possible picture and the greatest understanding of the breadth of the conflict mm -hmm. and, you know, that different people are experiencing it in yep. different ways yep. and, and I don't see why that approach would be so threatening <laughs> to, sure. to historians who, you know, are doing great work in their chosen kind of field of the war. Um, exactly, and I mean, I, I always bring in my classes of Nelson Miles at the end when we get to the um, to Chicago and the strikes he puts down of how he equates the strikers to Confederates and Native mm -hmm. Americans, mm -hmm. and it's this, it's a duality of what influences that military leadership. Mm -hmm. So I think it's great to see more work done on the American West during the Civil War. Well, good. I'm glad.